Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel and are operating remotely until further notice in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on the agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Please, quorum. Thank you. Ms. Lay, would you please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting? Eric Brusades? Here. Daryl Williams? Mary Boswell McComas? Present. William Burke? Michael Dickerson? Present. Margaret Ann Howie. Ann Rungfari Sangaroon. Present. Maria Lowry. Present. Brian Scriven. Present. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Michael Zarchin. Present. Christina Byers. Raquel Jones. Present. George Roberts. Present. Bernard Adams. Present. Barbara Burnop. Present. James Corns. Present. Pete Dixit. Present. Amalio Nieves. Present. George Saris. Present. Megan Shea. Present. Errol Plate. Errol Plate. Present. If there are additional staff partic participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. I believe that's it, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts one through seven. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. And to you and the other members of the committee, the first item we have uh, is MWE 83315, Musical Instrument Rental and Repair Services. This contract modification will provide for continued musical instrument rental and repair services for the Office of Music and Dance Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $325,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $650,000 with two vendors approved by the board in May 2015. Thank you. I have one question on this contract. Um, is this approval being proactively for expenses already incurred for this fiscal year? Uh, 
in a sense, yes, we have uh, just reached slightly over our spending authority because of the uh, the need to comply with new hygiene standards um, for the cleaning and sanitation of instruments. And so uh, given that we know that we would will uh, need additional expenditures before the contract term expires next May. And so we wanted to uh, request this spending authority to uh, finish out the balance of the contract. And we're just with, with some uncertainty yet about how the remainder of the instructional year will develop. Um, we've requested uh, to uh, double the amount of previously approved. Mr. Saris, if I can add to that, good afternoon. This is Mrs. Shea. Hi, Mrs. Shea. Hi. Um, we also had, um, in addition to what Mr. Saris office, um, offered, we also had an increase in the number of repairs that we were sending for instruments. Oftentimes, some of the minimal repairs happen ongoing when kids are in school and the instrumental music teacher does a tightening here and there, a tweak here and there. Um, due to the closure, we did see an increase. And... Um, as a parent of an instrumental music student, sort of unsupervised use of instruments <laughs> in the spring, we did see an increase in the number of repairs for our inventory of instruments that um, are also covered under this. So since the closure in the spring, we have been repairing, maintaining instruments, children are receiving um, service on their instruments during virtual learning. So in the um, in June, you may recall, we scheduled an opportunity sort of, um, it's not ongoing like every day, but we did have that opportunity at the end of the year where students could return supplies and materials, you might remember. Instruments were included in that, and we are currently actively working throughout the summer and into the fall. Our vendor partners were making those repairs, and we are actively redistributing those instruments then, so students are expected to have them in hand and be able to use them for instrumental music instruction during virtual learning. Great. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Tan, I have a question for Ms. Mache. Hi, Mr. McMillian. Hi. Thank you, Harrison. Okay. Um, for putting this together, so I, it really is helpful to that way. Um, I, I wanted to understand the expenditure that have been um, put out the board to date for this fiscal year because it looks like reading this, we already reached our 650,000 lifetime contract contract expenditure. So with the end date on this contract being May 31st, 2021, I, I wanted to understand if that was the case, that we had already reached the cap of our spending authority because in reading the um, fiscal year to date contract expenditures of 326,000 and Let's see. Can you um, perhaps clarify that for the committee? Have we, in fact, incurred? Yes. The the year-to-date expenses are approximately $1,700 in excess of the spending authority. The previous spending authority? Cur the current, $325,000. We're requesting that it be increased. Okay, so and that are the cumulative expenditures? So, yes. So, <clears throat> The cumulative expenditures are $326,711. Um, and we have, uh, let's see, in the past, uh, in the current fiscal year, um, let's see, 95, we spent 100, 
uh, approximately, I think, um, dollars, which we, uh, which took us over the limit. George, we may need to wait for Ms. Ten to rejoin the meeting. Okay. Okay, I was kicked out of the George, could you give her that response again, please? Cause I, I think she's frozen again, Julie. Yeah. Julie. Okay. okay, looks like she's back. So I think the question was, like George, give her, give her one second. Miss Hen, are you are you with us? We just want to verify before we try to respond. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Am I back? Okay, I'll, I'll turn off my video. Maybe that'll help the connection quality. Is there a delay? Uh, we can still hear you. No, you're good, Julie. Mr. Saris was, was answering your question, Julie. Okay, I couldn't hear him, so I apologize. So, on. so the, what we've spent um this year since uh, in the summer and fall of is $127,000 which um was necessitated by as Ms. Shea said the repairs and the additional cleaning expenses that were not anticipated when the contract was initiated so we have exceeded the current spending authority by 1700 $12, and we're asking that the spending authority be increased by $325,000 to $650,000. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Board members, are there other questions? Uh, Ms. Ten, I had a question. Yes, Mr. McMillian and then Ms. Rowe. Ms. Shea, are we, during virtual learning, are we currently loaning instruments to the elementary school kids? Yes. So they have, like, if it's clarinet, they're having a lesson with the music teacher right now. Maybe so that, not right now. But. Well, I was just going to say, probably not this minute, but yes, <laughs> that process is underway for instrumental music teachers at the elementary school to reach out to students through the fifth grade program, seek students that are interested in participating. Um, then students have an option to um, use one of our loaner instruments or rent or purchase their own or use one that they may already have. So yes, that process is well underway in our elementary school programs. Outstanding, they need that hands-on experience, thank you. They sure do. 
Great. Ms. Rowe? Mr. Saris, I have a question that's probably more of a, a process question than anything else, but what process allows us to spend money and issue purchase orders that is outside of the spending or authority that the board has not approved? It seems a little bit unusual that you're coming to us asking for a spending authority after the money's already been spent. Uh, it is unusual in this case because of the additional and needs of the the COVID crisis. Um, so the uh, the process that's in place is that we track uh, contract expenditures uh, and report every two weeks to staff, and that as soon as it, we became aware of it. Uh, we moved to put this on a board agenda. Does that answer your question, Ms. Rowe, or did you have any other questions? If the answer is my question, I just don't think I like the answer. I'm just concerned that these processes should be in place in such a way that we find out as we're approaching a spending limit, not once we've already gone over it, because this would be an audit finding if it came out like that. Mm -hmm. Are we working on that so that this doesn't happen? Yeah, so part of, um, we put in place about four years ago this, um, every this bi-weekly report to all the chiefs um, by which we anticipate expenditures and when a con and by our process when we get to a 75 percent threshold uh, we reach out to the offices that manage the contract and we say this needs to go back for board approval uh, are there any other issues we need to address at the time? Um, and in this case, uh, we were faced with a critical request that um, in order to keep this program moving, uh, we needed to make some immediate expenditures to recondition and clean the instruments. And so, uh, we allowed those expenses up to the threshold, in this case, a small amount over, and made plans to bring the contract forward. In um, the system, the, the upgraded procurement system that we're currently implementing, uh, this will no longer be a manual process. In other words, the uh, the three hundred fifty thousand dollar limit in this case would be uh, would prevent that seventeen hundred dollar uh, expenditure over authority, and it would simply stop that expense uh, from being processed. And uh, we are moving forward. Uh, with training users on the new system and putting it in place. It's not fully implemented as yet, but it's been in development for the last 18 months. And uh, we feel that we have materially complied with our, our policy. Okay, so my other question is, this spending authority is, we spent $114,000 in a year, and then we spent just this year 320. Are you anticipating that we're going to spend the 600 some odd thousand dollars before the end of this school year? I don't have a better estimate than what has been received from the Office of Music and Dance. So um, if Ms. Shea has any other information to provide, I would appreciate it. But 
I just don't think we know precisely what to expect um, for the remainder of the year. I guess I'm concerned that it seems like costs are going from roughly $100,000 annually to $600,000 annually. That, I, that seems like you don't have an explanation for that. Well, costs are not $600,000 annually. Um, if you look at the, con at the exhibit, um, we've spent $326,000 over the last, uh, let's see here, five, uh, four, four and a half years. Um, but this year alone, we had an unanticipated expense in the summer and fall of $127,000. And that's why we reached the spending threshold um, and of $325,000. And we, the, con the contract has the remaining seven months or so on it. Um, and this estimate was determined in conjunction with curriculum and instruction. Um, and that's just the best information, best estimate we can provide at this time for the remainder of the contract. So can you tell me how much was budgeted in the budget for this line item? Because I'm concerned that possibly we didn't budget enough and we're going to be going over our budget because the, if, if this contract ends on 521 and there's seven months left, and you're anticipating spending another three hundred and twenty-five thousand. That will be six hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, most of which is spent in one fiscal year. Do you have the budget amount? So, Miss Rowe, if I can add to that, um, this is Miss Shea. Obviously, as you know, with so many other things, we've had to make adjustments and move because, of course, we never predicted the situation that we're in, and that I know is a recurring theme. So we will work to ensure within the Department of Academics um, and, and the larger division of curriculum and instruction, um, we do have a process by way we can um, stay within the total allocation of the budget for the department and the division, but reallocate and put funds where they're needed. So in this case, to ensure that we have enough funds to support the current quotes that we have for necessary repairs. So what you're saying is you're assuring that we're not going to be exceeding our approved budget. Right, overall, not in total, overall, correct. Okay. So we really work together because, of course, with COVID, while there are some unanticipated expenses, there are other expenses that we planned for that may not happen because of the shifts. And so we're just constantly working. Um, we're lucky we have phenomenal support with our fiscal assistant in CNI, as mm -hmm. Frock, as well as um, Dr. McComa. So it's a constant process that we're reviewing to make sure of that, but to also okay. be responsive to the needs for our students. So, Mr. Saris, is this going to be something we're going to see on a future BAT transfer then? Because it sounds like the answer is no. The, the annual budget of 325000 has not yet been spent. The, the spending authority for the five-year term of the contract has been spent, and that's what we're requesting uh, board approval to increase. So we've not exceeded budget. Uh, we have the available funds, but we need the board's authority uh, to spend them, uh, which in this case will exceed what we've typically spent on average in prior years. Okay, thank you. So, okay. Hello. Lily, drop your video connection.
Let's try this again. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay. Teams is not liking me today. Sorry about that. I was asking I've been there. Yes. remaining months on the contract and as as Ms. Rowe had said, the modification amount and the amount if perhaps Mrs. Shea could speak to to that and the increase that's being requested given the average annual expenditures. Um, sure. So what I can share, um, which hopefully will help answer, um, I think I heard the question. So just to um, illustrate last year, uh, we repaired and, you know, sent out for repair and cleaning um, a total of close to 1300 instruments. And this year we have a need to send out for repair and cleaning um, 30 over 3100. So we had a difference of um, over 1,800 instruments that we're using or would like to use um, this contract to repair. And again, some of that, um, we anticipate that the increase is a result of COVID due to, as I mentioned, the extended time that these instruments were in the home um, and needing those additional repairs. So it could be anything from repairing a clarinet key to a valve on a trumpet and so on. So that is really the explanation we have for the increase in the number of instruments. And then that's the increase in the anticipated cost. I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Yep. Board members, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, the next. Uh, next item that we have is uh, CWA 100-21, provide and install dance flooring. This is a new cooperative contract to provide and install dance flooring at various BCPS school locations for the Office of Music and Dance Education. Approval is requested for a one-year, five-month contract with the option to extend for three one-year terms with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Great, thank you. Board members, questions? I have one for Mrs. Shea. Um, could you discuss how the schools were selected? That are sure. Part so the. Um, Office of Music and Dance and our dance led by um, this particular project led by our dance specialist, um, Ms. Sonia Sinkowski, has a multi-year plan. And so typically how that works is that um, schools express an interest in having a dance program and then there's a multi-year approach. So we have to make sure that the school principal is committed to allocating the staffing to support dance that there's student interest in enrollment, and then we seek a multi-year approach for um, actually outfitting, if you will, the, the classroom space. And so um, these are schools that have dance programs in place and established and are sort of next on that multi-year plan to ensure that the classroom space is out, outfitted to align with the curricular expectations and safety guidelines. Great, thank you. Sure. Board members, other questions? Hearing none, moving on, thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is, um, get there, LK, uh, and I do want to note two corrections here. Uh, this is, the contract number should be LKO 401-21. Uh, for nursing and first aid supplies. Uh, this is a new competitively bid contract for nursing supplies for the Department of Social Emotional Support. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with seven recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1,150,000. And I also... Uh, need to correct uh, the operating budget is not the only source of funding here. 
that we have estimated uh, within the $1.15 million amount that approximately $900,000 of this amount will be available uh, from the CARES Act uh, grant funds uh, that have already been approved. Um, and so that funding source line should read operating uh, and grant funds. Thank you. Questions for members? Yes, Ms. Hatt, I have a question. Um, Ms. Mattis, Mr. Saris. Oh, Ms. Slate? Was that, oh, Ms. Mack, sorry. Mr. Saris, um, are we anticipating purchasing the same nursing supplies that we purchase year after year or with the pandemic and a different way of doing things when students return to school? Is our shopping list going to be larger? Um, beyond what I've shared, I think Dr. Nieves is going to have to help me out here. But part of this uh, amount is what what we would typically spend, and the large increase is is in response to COVID. Um, but I'll let Dr. Nieves or Ms. Somerville expand on that. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, thank you for your question, Ms. Mack. Uh, and so uh, a lot of the purchases that we will be making is to purchase uh, PPE, personal protective equipment, as part of the guidance that is coming out from the Department of Health Services and the Baltimore County Department of Health. And all of the expenses will be incurred at the school system level, right? Are, are we asking schools to cover any of this out of their schoolhouse budgets? No, we will be uh, ordering all of those supplies for schools and distributing them to them. Okay, thank you very much. Did you have any other questions, Ms. Mack? Or does that cover your questions? That's it for me, thank you. Thank you. Board okay, member the, no. Thank you. The next item is JMI, JMI 619-16, Local Telecommunications Services. This contract modification will provide for the use of local phone services for multiple BCPS departments and units while BCPS continues the transition to the new voice over internet protocol system. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $190,186, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,551,186 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in April 2016. Is the um, end date also changing on this or are we just increasing the spending authority with this modification? Yes, the end date does not change. The contract expires next June uh, it's a five-year contract, and when we initiated, uh, our, our plan was to uh, have been further along with the transition to VOIP, but we've had uh, limited availability of funds uh, in order to accomplish that goal. So. Um, we just wanted to adjust the spending authority here to see us through the end of the term in uh, next June. Because we save money on local phone service by converting as many phones over. Yeah. So 
So it's a double-edged sword, <laughs> the limited funds to move to voice over IP, even though it's a savings in the long right. run to get right. there. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for members? Ms. Hannah, I have a question. It's Lisa Mack. Yes, Ms. Matt. Mr. Saris, that um, modification amount just seems like a very weird amount to me. Have we spent this? And, and similar to the conversation that we had, I think, on the first contract, have we gone over and this 190, 190,000 brings us where we need to be to pay the contract? Or, I mean, how did we arrive at the 190,186? So, um, Ms. Mack, on the exhibit, uh, you will see that uh, the contract expenditures to date are $2,758,000. Yes. And so, based on our uh, current bills, uh, we've projected those costs out through the end of the fiscal year to arrive at this figure. Um, we had not expected to exceed this spending authority because of the planned transition to VOIP, which has been delayed. So it's an estimate, uh, just like all of the uh, projected, well, like any board spending authority amount is an estimate at the time of the contract or at the time we bring a modification back to the board. Okay, thank you for that information. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Any other questions? Hearing none, next item. Okay, the next item is um, ASI 803-20, cleaning of student laptop bags. This is a, a new competitively bid contract for the cleaning of student laptop bags for the Office of Technology Support Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $300,000. What is the per um, bag cost for each cleaning? So the bid price here is 89 cents. Oh, the low bid price, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And at one point we had talked about replacing bags. Is the plan now to Clean them instead? Is there a... What well, is we've been doing both for yeah. the past several years um, with varying success. So uh, that's why we issued this bid to see if we could find a, uh, a reliable provider for cleaning. Um, and Mr. Corns can expand on my response, but... Uh, we have tended to have to replace more than we've been able to clean and put back in service. Um, and so this is our latest effort to try to reduce, I think, what's about a $10 cost to replace okay. the bag. Right. Mr. Corns, do you have anything to correct me on or add? Mr. Saris, you've covered it well. These are for the bags that are deemed um, it, able to be salvaged, but simply need a good cleaning. So at 89 cents there, it's much more affordable than to purchase a new one. Thank you, Mr. Collins. I know there, there had been concerns from some schools given um, storage, variable storage conditions of some of the bags and conditions. So these are um, bags that I'm glad to hear you say that, that are deemed able to be cleaned. So, okay. Board members, other questions? Ms. Han, I just have a general question. When students um, 
preparing for the fall, did they, did we send them home with the bags or just their laptops or Chromebooks? Ms. Mack, the, um, the bags have uh, traditionally been designed for the middle and high school who have been doing a carry of their device back and forth to school. So we did not recollect those middle and high school devices, so they retain their bags. When we sent devices to the elementary school level, uh, they did not go out with a bag. They simply went out with the Chromebook and the charger because we were not in the expectation that they would be doing a daily carry back and forth at this point. Mm-hmm. So the bags that are out with the kids today in their houses, um, I guess at some point in the future, we will be getting them back, assessing whether they need to be Is that a true statement? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, normally that's part of our summer refresh process where we bring laptops in, do repairs, do bag collections at the school level, as Ms. Hannah was speaking to. So those evaluations would need to occur once we, we return to a face-to-face -face model. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Next item. So good afternoon. This is good Pete Dixon. Hi, Mr. Dixon. Uh, hope everybody is doing fine and safe. And you as well. Next contract is JME 507-21. It's for the operation of wastewater treatment facility at Hereford High School. This is one of the schools that has a large size wastewater self-contained treatment facility at the school because it's not connected to any sewer system. In order to maintain and operate, we need 24 hours, seven day per week, remote monitoring of the facility, including input and output flow rates, check the condition of the process water, and this work is done by a private contractor. We have had this type of contract ever since the beginning of the school. So board had approved this contract or extended last contract a few months ago. This is a new contract for five year period. Thank you. Board members, questions? And this is with our existing vendor? This is a contract with uh, Harford County Public Schools. So we are piggybacking on their contract. Okay. Thank you. Board members, other questions? Okay, hearing none, thank you. The next item is ARA 204-21. It's not a contract. It's a right-of-way agreement with BGE uh, at uh, Westtown Elementary School. They want to upgrade their service. It will increase electrical service reliability and hopefully minimize the duration of any electrical outages. So they are asking asking for access to our site uh, to, to house their equipment there and be able to maintain it. Uh, we have identified the location and it does not impact in any way on our use of the site. So we are asking board's approval uh, to grant them the right of way. Okay. Questions, board members? Okay, hearing none, thank you. Thank you, and that concludes uh, my part of the contract. Great, thank you very much. Board members, do I have a motion to recommend items one through seven to the full board for approval? So moved. May I have a second? Second, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Slade, may I have a roll call vote? Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. 
The motion carries. Is there any further business? Hearing none, since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned.
one. Good afternoon. This is Kathleen Causey, Chairwoman of the Board of Education, welcoming everyone to the preliminary design presentation for the Northeast Area Elementary School at Ridge Road. Uh, and I'm going to call forward Dr. Brian Scrivens, our Chief Operating and Administrative Officer, and Mr. Pete Dixit uh, to provide the presentation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the board. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Mr. Dixit, who's going to do the honor of introducing our architect presenter, who will give the overview for the Northeast Area Elementary School at Ridge Road pre preliminary design presentation. Mr. Dixit, the stage is all yours, sir. Thank you, Dr. Scriven. Good evening. Uh, Chair Causey and all the board members and uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, as you'll recall, board had approved construction of a new school uh, at Ridge Road Northeast Elementary School to relieve the capacity issues in the northeast part of the county. As part of our process, and in the interest of being totally transparent, we had started sharing preliminary design in an open session like this. This presentation was done a couple of years ago, but since then the project had to be rescheduled and our superintendent and a lot of you board members, you are new, you haven't seen this. So we, Dr. Scriven and Dr. Williams decided it'll be nice to share our design with you. The design is prepared by licensed professionals and it does not need any approval from the board, but it is in the interest of transparency that we want to share with the board and the public in an open session. The funding for that is, in the, is included, request for funding is included in the capital plan that board had approved, the state capital plan, and it is the number one project, so there's a good likelihood that the funding will be approved. County has already provided funds for the construct construction of the school. The, uh, the target date for completion if the funding is received is September 2023, and it'll go a long way in relieving the capacity in the Northeast Corridor. So before I give it to uh, our architect and introduce architect to you, there are a couple of acknowledgements um, since there is no principal, we work closely with our community superintendent. So I wanted to thank Dr. George Robert in a public session like this for his support and cooperation. As part of my team, you have seen Mr. Merrill Plate, who's the director of construction and improvement. And if you can show, if you open the camera, Mr. Plate, that will be good. So he is supported by our senior supervisor, Katie Angstad, who's right here in the cyberspace someplace, and project manager, Trevor Hicks. These are the team members that have been responsible for leading the effort for design and who will lead the effort toward the construction management. The project ar architect that board had approved is GWWO. It's a prototype, a, an improved version of prototype that we have used for Honeygo Elementary School. And with us are Brian Minnick, the project manager from GWWO, and Mr. Paul Hume, one of the principals of the company here. So with that, I'll give it to Brian Minnick. Thank you, Pete. Um, it's our pleasure to be here to design. Uh, I would like to request if I could have permission to share my screen. All right, so it's our, our pleasure to present today the plans for the Northeast Area Elementary School at Ridge Road. Uh, we'll go over some general information today, uh, talk about our project goals, uh, show you where the building is located, uh, some of the site conditions, and then we'll get into more of the building design, and then in the end, uh, show you some 3D renderings of what the project will look like. The project is uh, located in the Northeast Area Planning Area of Baltimore County. 
Uh, the project is going to be a new building on an undeveloped site. Uh, and currently the targeted rated state rated capacity is 735 students. And there are no regional programs currently scheduled for the property. Our project goals are to provide a 21st century learning environment for students. Uh, we'll provide some shared breakout spaces, large group learning spaces, and even some outdoor learning opportunities. The project will also achieve a lead silver uh, rating for a design and sustainability of strategy. So our pro project goals, obviously, to provide a most safe and secure uh, learning environment. The project will have card readers and security cameras, uh, as well as a locked security entrance vestibule and provide maximum visibility to anyone approaching the school. Uh, some of our unique um, design features, we have a very compact footprint for the project, a very efficient building layout, and we've standardized our classroom so that every classroom is equal uh, amount of daylight and visibility uh, and opportunities. Some of our project value engineering goals, uh, we have gone through an extensive geotechnical investigation to make sure that we understand what's in the soil and what's under the ground so that when we start construction, we don't run into any con uh, concerns or surprises to help save money for the school district. For the vicinity map, the area is located along Rossville Boulevard, and this is near the intersection of Route 95 and 695. Within the proximity of the area, there are currently four elementary schools, Shady Spring, Fullerton, Elmwood, and McCormick Elementary Schools are all located to the southwest of the property. There are currently two middle school sites. The new Northeast, Northeast Area Middle School site is to the uh, east, and Golden Ring Middle School is to the south. There's currently one high school within the two-mile radius, and that's Overly High School, also located to the southwest of their site. Directly uh, down Rossville Boulevard on the other side of 95 is the Community College of Baltimore County's XX campus. As we zoom into the site itself, it's made up of two parcels. Uh, one is the uh, community project open space. The other is a property for Baltimore County Public Schools. And together that gives us a 19.2 acre project site. It is fully wooded, undeveloped. We have Ridge Road to the north of the property, Gum Spring Road to the west, Along the south, we have Rossville Boulevard. We we'll also have Turning, Court, uh, Turning Leaf Court and Gilly Terrace also are adjacent to the site. One thing that's unique about the site is there's a ridge which runs diagonal uh, through the site and slopes down to each corner. And we've used that to our advantage to place the building along that ridge, which allows us to move the least amount of dirt and disturb as little soil and project site as we can in order to save the project, uh, the project money. We know that Rossville Boulevard is a very highly uh, traveled site or street. Gum Spring Road is a little bit less traveled. Uh, so we've used that uh, information to provide our main entrance into the site and a main sidewalk entrance off of Gum Spring, our main entrance drive in that same location, and our main parking lot directly to the front of the building. Now we've moved that parking lot and adjusted it so that we can provide as many and save as many of the specimen trees on the site as possible. Our drop-off loop will come into the front of the building and drop off right in front of the admin area. So the drop-off is on the right-hand side of the students and no students have to cross that traffic once they get off of their, their car and enter the building. The main bus loop will go around the other side of the building, uh, which provides a separate bus drop-off area from the car parking area. This will bring them into the other side of the building into a shared lobby, which we'll see in a few minutes. The service drive will follow the same route as the buses around the back side of the building. There's a paved teaching court in the back side of the building adjacent to the gym area and adjacent to the outdoor play fields. We have a paved play court in the back of the building as well as a playground for the first through fifth grade students and a separate playground for the pre-K and kindergarten students. We also offer several outdoor learning opportunities, including a reading garden back by the play area and a rooftop classroom garden, which you'll see at the end of the presentation. With the site being wooded, there is the opportunity for the development of nature trails if they feel they, uh, that opportunity is, is something they want to pursue. This is, as Pete mentioned, the development of a prototype that we've successfully used with Baltimore County in the past. Uh, there's a classroom wing, a connecting core in the gym area, 
what we had uh, for the project, we have increased that classroom wing to go to its full capacity of the 732 uh, state freighted capacity. With those three pieces, we provided um, the updated site and floor plan for Northeast Area Elementary School. The bus loop entry and the main entry, as we mentioned, come in from both sides of the building into one common lobby. The guidance and admin suite being able to have full visibility of all the visitors approaching that building from the front. Health suite is directly adjacent or just, uh, directly across the hall from the admin area in that central core space, as well as the art classrooms and collaborative learning spaces. Typical pre-K and kindergarten classrooms are located in the back side of the building, directly adjacent to the play areas. Along the front of the building, we have our typical grades one through five classrooms and some specialized instructional classrooms. Around all of our classrooms, we have ex extended learning areas and all of our classrooms are organized around a central collaborative learning space. We've laid out the building so that all of our service core areas are brought into the middle of the building. This allows the maximum visibility and daylight to all the classroom spaces and put those other uh, functions more towards the center of the building, which don't need that direct view. Our gymnasium is located on the west side of the site and directly adjacent to the cafeteria. With this, there's an operable partition which can be opened so they can utilize both of those spaces for larger functions. In the back and behind the cafeteria and stage, we've provided the music classrooms, which gives them direct access to the back of the stage for performances on the evening. There's also a Baltimore County Rec and Parks uh, component to the plan, which is adjacent to the play fields in the back of the building. On the upper level floor plan, we have the learning commons centrally located for access to all students. There's also a video production area, as well as a flexible learning, learning classroom makerspace which is access to all students. We've utilized uh, this circulation space for a collaborative space as well. And our typical classrooms around the outside all have access to extended learning areas and organized around a central collaborative learning space. Service core on the second floor is the same as on the first, again, maximizing those views for the student classroom spaces. There's also a rooftop classroom, which allows access to a uh, green roof and areas for student learning. And we've utilized the roof forms to provide a mechanical penthouse up in a hidden area, and we're able to utilize the roof forms uh, for that service. For building security, both entrance for the bus and main entry, as we mentioned, come into that common central um, area. We have the visual supervision of the admin desk who can see anyone approaching the building. And that entrance vestibule can be supervised from one single point to give you maximum uh, security and, and field awareness of everyone around you. We also have to have a separation door which separates the classroom wing from the central core. This is our view of the front of the building as you approach as a student drop off. We provided a front canopy for, for protection from the rain. Another view. This is the back side of the building where the student bus drop-off would be. We've been able to use this space not only for the student drop-off, but also for an outdoor paved play court. We'll have a little fly through here. And we're sort of coming in off of Gum Spring Road in this location. Students would drop off at the front door. visibility from the front desk from anyone approaching, and you would have to come into the vestibule before gaining access into the rest of the building, providing a secure entry. As you can see there's the drop off in the back of the bus, so we all come into one central lobby. We've been able to utilize the space underneath the stairs outside of the art for an additional collaborative learning space, being able to utilize that square footage that simply uh, usually is, is wasted. You're looking back towards the gym. Another way we've been able to sort of um, utilize additional space. Coming up the main stair, we've been able to utilize the space for an additional collaborative space.
Now moving down towards the learning commons. We provide a flexible furniture. Stacks are on wheels, they can be moved around as needed. We're providing two uh, separate teaching stations within the space. Simple visibility from, this, from the circulation desk. We come back into the corridor. We see the multi-use commons multi-use uh, classroom, which can be used as a maker space. State-of-the-art technology in all classrooms, operable partition, this can be separated into two spaces if you'd like. You can open it up for a larger classroom as you see here as well. We're now entering through the separation doors into the classroom wing, where we'll take a look at one of our typical classrooms. Again, state-of-the-art technology, you have mobile uh, whiteboards, mobile uh, TV screens, flexible furniture, collaborative space in the corner. Moving down the hallway towards the central uh, part of the school, we see a collaborative space to our, to our left. Rooftop garden to our right. Bring it into our central collaborative room, providing natural daylight. Areas for small group as well as larger group learning. And now taking a look out onto the green roof, where we provide planters for every grade level for outdoor projects. We'll take a look at uh, some of our interior views. This is the collaborative space underneath the stairs that we saw. Our stair collaborative space we were able to utilize with some block down curtains, which allow it to be used for projection as well. Our learning commons. Our typical classrooms. Views. And again, those central collaborative spaces that are centrally located to the, uh, for all students. One last view of our outdoor learning space, outdoor rooftop garden. With that, that's what we have today. Uh, we open up to any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Board members, if you have questions, I'll be looking in the uh, list here, and I see Miss Molly Joes. Thank you, Miss Kazi. Uh, Mr. Dixit, are all of our schools, the new schools, LEED certified as a standard, or is that something we just do? We try to. We strive to meet on the LEED certification requirement. So, the answer to your question is yes. In some cases, we have not gone through the process of LEED certification, but they meet the requirements of that LEED certification. And Mr. Minnick, if I did anything, said anything wrong, please correct me. Yep, that's, that's correct. Okay. So is this building going to certif be certified LEED? Yes. Yes. Okay, but there is no board requirement that all our new buildings should be LEED certified, correct? There is no board requirement. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And I, I love the design. So, you know, great job. I love the rain gardens and all the bioretention facilities. So, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Rowe. Hello. I can't remember which school that I toured that had this, but I wanted to know, is this school, um, I didn't see anything in the presentation about bathrooms. And there was a school that I visited that had a very interesting design for bathrooms that allowed both privacy and supervision so that students can't, for instance, go into the bathroom, block the doors, and then teachers and people can't get in, which has been 
a problem with supervising bathrooms because adults can't be in the bathroom with students. And this, one of our schools has a bathroom design where as you're walking down the hallway, the sinks are almost facing the hallway, but then the bathroom stalls are individual stalls and there's not an actual door that you go in. And I wondered if this school, it was a newer school, and I wondered if this school was going to have bathrooms like that. Pete, I'd love to answer that question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Ms. Rowe, Merrill Plate, the um, <clears throat> all schools since the construction of Victory Villa and Honey Go and Lansdowne have all had bathrooms with no doors on them, as you describe. Uh, and this school will be just like that. Thank you. I really appreciate that bathroom um, design because I volunteered for a hall monitor for a while and the supervision of the bathrooms is just impossible otherwise. So thank you for figuring that out, whoever figured out how to design bathrooms that way. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Mack. Yes, thank you. You may have said this and I might have missed it, but did you point out where there will be elevators for students who cannot climb the steps? Yes, uh, Brian, can you go back to that slide and show no, that? You don't have to go back, just confirm for me that we do indeed have easy access for all students. Yes, Absolutely. that is true. Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hen? Thank you, and thank you for the presentation. The design is gorgeous. Um, I love the open learning spaces. So many of the elements that are amazing at Honeygo Elementary, I recognize in this presentation, and they're, they're fantastic. My question is, do you have um, any experts in safety and security on your design team? And are they consulted when considering the design? And how does that factor into um, your choices for open learning spaces? Obviously, you need to balance the aesthetics and the pedagogy along with school safety and security. Can you discuss that and how that factors into the design? So I'll try to answer the first part, and then I'll give it to Brian, who can go into more details. So that is an excellent question, uh, Ms. Hen. As part of our design review process, we include our safety and security team in addition to transportation and all of the other team, all of all of the teams uh, that have to live with this design. So the the short answer is yes. There is an extensive process to review safety features uh, in these in, in the in all of our school designs. So Brian, if you want to add your piece to it, sure. Thanks, Pete. Um, we always look at uh, school security in all of our designs. Uh, we utilize SEPTED principles in the design and layout of all of our spaces. Uh, you may have heard me mention many times about having that admin area have direct visibility to the approach. Um, that's sort of our first step. Uh, we also then look at layers within the building uh, to provide layers of security as you move throughout the building. Um, all of the classrooms have an area of refuge within them to provide areas for lockdown uh, or whatever um, design um, strategy um, the school would, would like to use. So all of those areas have been thought of um, and layers of security have been designed into the school. Can you talk about yeah. the vestibule, the entrance vestibule and the double locking? Yeah. There? Yes, as, as all of our schools now have a security vestibule. So as you approach the building, uh, before you're granted access even into the vestibule, you have to um, buzz in. They, uh, the site is laid out so they see you approaching. Um, they can sort of assess uh, as you approach that front door. Once you gain access into the vestibule, you then have to click on yet another security um, uh, door to be let into the front lobby and check in. Uh, you are scanned um, at that front office uh, before they can then allow you to then go around that vestibule to have access to the rest of the building. Thank you. Brian, could you please uh, explain what the uh, what SEPTED is? Uh, sure. Uh, SEPTED is a design uh, security strategy, which is crime prevention through environmental design. Um, and it deals with um, laying out the building in order to uh, see and be seen. 
uh, the idea that you can um, see people coming before they are a problem um, and design the layout, not simply relying on security cameras alone, though this project does have those security cameras, um, but laying out the site so that you have direct line of sight of anyone approaching the space. Thank you. This is Kathleen. Along those lines, um, I had a question. In February of 2020, um, the Interagency Commission on School Construction and the Maryland State Council on Child Abuse and Neglect uh, issued a report, Maryland Guidelines and Best Practices for the Design, Assessment, and Modification of Physical Facilities and Spaces to Reduce Opportunities for Child Sexual Abuse. So you had mentioned the SEPTED as um, providing guidelines for security. Um, does it also address these specific issues? Um, I know this report came out just before the pandemic, so I'm not sure how widely it has been responded to as yet, but I did want to um, hear how these issues were kept in mind. Pete, I'd be happy to answer that. Sure, go ahead. Um, a lot of that, uh, the document that, that is uh, addressing um, that security really parallels a lot of the SEPTED principles. That's why they really work well together. Um, that provides a visual line of sight um, throughout the space. Um, all of the classrooms have a side light to the door, which allows you to see into the classroom um, during standard classroom times where blinds would be pulled uh, in the intent of a lockdown. We also provide windows and light for all sides of the building. So there really is no backside of the building, which means there's no nooks or crannies to hide in, which also is one of the elements we talked about in that study. Thank you. And next we have Ms. Pasteur. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that design. And uh, Ms. Causey, uh, I, I had two questions, but one of them was just answered just about sight lines and, and being able to see um, in a more safe way if there's an intruder uh, and for all of the things that we consider for our young people if they need to uh, take any kind of um, a route out or somewhere else. So thank you for that um, explanation. The other one has to do with uh, the buses. And it was good to see the buses on one side so that you you don't have uh, the, all of the, the traffic coming in or out at the same um, time, I don't think. I saw where the drop-off is, but if you don't mind, and you just go over, and you may well have done it, and I missed it, would you just go over again um, about getting onto the property and then exiting the property, the actual sure. movement of traffic. Sure, I'll go back to the site plan so we can go through that. Thank you. So, yep, as we have this, it's set up so that all of the ingress coming into the site comes off of Gum Spring Road because the traffic along that is a little bit slower. So, okay. parents will drop off on that side, drop off in front for a student drop off area. And then they will exit off of that same road onto Gum Spring. That's the parent drop off. It's all okay. in one loop on the left traffic road. Okay. The way that it's set up for the buses, they have the option they can go, they drive to the back of the building, and they exit to a oh. right turn only onto Rossville Boulevard so that no one's making a left hand turn onto Rossville. Okay, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. And seeing the time, and we have to move on to our next meeting, I'll, I'll wrap this up. Appreciate that presentation. And uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that this presentation will be loaded onto Board Docs tomorrow so that it will be um, available for all to see. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brian, thank you. And, and thank you, everyone. So this meeting is now concluded and we will reconnect shortly for our closed session.